Praise the Lord, church, and welcome to our Sunday night service right here at East Wind Campus in Palm Bay, Florida. Now, as you probably have heard, we're not having live services for the next couple of Sunday nights, but we are excited about a very special guest that's going to be preaching tonight, and you're going to be blessed by the Word of God. I want you to get ready to welcome the Word of God from evangelist Chris Green, as he brings to us a very special message that I know will be a blessing to you and your family. And next Sunday night is going to be a great time of inspirational singing by Brother Jeff Walthall and some of our choir members, and you're going to be blessed by that on next Sunday night. But get ready right now for a mighty move of the Holy Ghost with evangelist Chris Green. Now may God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody at East Wind. So good to be with all of you again. I appreciate the gracious invitation to be with your great and wonderful church. And again, I wish I could see you face to face, but we will do the best with what God has given us. Amen. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we believe that the Word of God is forever settled in heaven. And whether it's being preached behind a pulpit in a church building, or whether it's being preached through Facebook Live or social media, it is still the Word of God. It is powerful. It is quick and sharper than any two-edged sword. Amen. Thank you, brother and sister Myers. You are our great friends to us, and we thank you for this opportunity to be with this great apostolic church. I want to turn your attention to the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 2 through 3. I feel that I have a word from the Lord. God gave me this word just this morning, so I warn you it's not been polished up and, and put together so eloquently with notes, but I feel that it is fresh bread and that it is for somebody that's listening to this sermon tonight. Amen. I want to read to you tonight Deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 2 through, in fact, let's read verses 2 through 4. I'm going to read from the New King James Version and the scripture says, And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Verse 4. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. If you go back to verse 3, it says that God allowed you to hunger. And that's where I want to take my title tonight, Allowed to Hunger. Whether you're sitting in your living room, your car, wherever you are, would you just pray with me for just a moment that your heart would be open, that your faith would be lifted to receive what thus saith the Lord tonight. Would you lift up your hands and close your eyes and lift up your voice with faith, with boldness, authority, and expectation. God, by the authority of the Word of God and by the power of the name of Jesus Christ, transcend the limitations of this Word that's being spoken through social media, transcend the limitations of our mind as we sit in our cars or our homes or wherever they are, God, listening to your word, that we would hear what your spirit is speaking to the church. Let our ear be inclined to hear your voice tonight. Demonstrate your love, your grace, your mercy, and your truth through the word of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Can we just take a moment and praise God together? Lord, I praise you. I worship you for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I lift you up tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. <coughs> Excuse me. Allowed to hunger. Allowed to hunger. I want you to notice in verse 4 in Deuteronomy chapter 8 that God points out the fact that He protected the outward man. In verse 4 of Deuteronomy 8, he says, Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. It's interesting to me to realize the point that God protected the outward man, but tested the inward man. Amen. The scripture in Deuteronomy 8 
is such an amazing passage. And I want to go through this chapter uh, just piece by piece. I won't go through every verse. And you may be bored in this little Bible study, but I believe that I have a word of faith, a word of hope and encouragement for somebody at East Wind Pentecostal Church tonight. And on the outset of this word, I feel like we need to lay the foundation to understand something that may sound simple, but yet very profound and important in our walk with God. And that's this. God is in charge. I want you to say that with me. God is in charge. I want you to turn to your son or your daughter or your spouse and tell them God is in charge. We may be in a season of chaos, but we are not in a season of confusion because God is in charge and God is not the author of confusion. There may be uncertainty on the rise. There may be chaos on the rise. There may be lawlessness on the rise and there may be morality, immorality on the rise, but God is still in charge. God is in charge of every season. In fact, I'm reminded of the scripture in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, that most of us know and even know by heart to the point that you could quote that says, if my people will pray, then I'll hear from heaven. But the context of 2 Chronicles 7, 14 is found in verse 13 when God says, when I shut up the heavens and cause there to be no rain upon the earth. He said, when I send forth locust to devour the land and when I send forth a pestilence in your land, that word pestilence is defined in the Hebrew as a fatal epidemic or disease. And God takes responsibility here and says, when I shut up the heavens from raining, when I send forth locusts to devour the land, and when I send forth a pestilence or a fatal epidemic or disease. You say, how can we receive faith in that? How is that a word of faith? It is always a word of faith when we have the revelation that God is in charge. He is the God who gives and the God who taketh away. And in the times that he is taking away, we can uh, take, take faith to understand that God is in charge. Why, again, is that a statement of faith? Because if God is in charge, we know that God is not in trouble. God is not in trouble today. People hear me right now. God is in charge. He said, and when I send forth a pestilence or a fatal epidemic or disease, verse 14, if my people which are called by my name. You see, I'm in charge, but I have a church. And when I'm in charge, I give a power of responsibility, of authority and influence upon my people, the church. So if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I I, God said, I will heal their land. Now hear me correctly tonight. We need our government and we need our officials and we need all the, all the policies and everything else. And we ought to pray for everybody in charge of our systems and our government for them to make the right decisions that there is healing in the land. But we must take faith tonight with the revelation that God says, I can heal the land. If you'll put your faith in me, if you'll put your trust in me, if you'll humble yourself and you'll pray, I'm the one who sent the pestilence. I'm the one who's devouring the land. I'm the one who's caused the drought to come. I'm in charge. And if you'll pray, I will heal the land. Somebody say amen. God is in charge. In this hour, there is no greater time of importance that the church finds a place of prayer, a place of sacrifice, a place of fasting, where we get on our face and we say, God, I'm not going to stop praying until I have touched heaven, until I have grabbed a hold of the throne of God and heard your voice speak to me. 
That's why in the book of Hosea, the, uh, chapter 5, verse 15, God said, In their affliction, in their affliction, they will seek me early. I looked up what that means in the original language of Hebrew, and it, it means in their tight place of distress, they will seek me diligently early. They will diligently seek me early. They will get up before the alarm clock. They will get up before the sun rises and they will eagerly wait for my spirit. They will wait for the sun to rise in their physical, but they will wait for my spirit to arise in the spiritual. They will seek me diligently. That reminded me of the scripture in Hebrews 11 and 6 that says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you put the scriptures together, it, it's speaking of a time, a tight place of distress that will cause the people of God to seek him diligently. But the word of faith in, 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 in Hebrews 11, which happens to be the chapter of faith, says that God will reward those who diligently seek him. Can I ask you right now, how many of you are allowing this pressure to, to develop a prayer life? You're allowing this chaos to develop a commitment and consecration of sacrifice, a prayer life that you have never had before. How many of you have allowed this tight place of distress and affliction to cause such a desperation, devotion and determination to deny yourself, to take up the cross and to follow Jesus Christ with a reckless abandonment casting aside our fears throwing aside the weight and the sin that has so easily beset us and said Jesus I will follow you with more tenacity and commitment than I have ever followed before amen going back to our scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 8 he said I led you into the wilderness and I allowed you to hunger that is an oxymoron when have you ever told your kids, I allowed you to be hungry tonight? You don't tell your kids that. It's, I allowed you to eat ice cream tonight. I allowed you to eat a popsicle. I allowed you to have a brownie and a popsicle tonight. I allowed you to eat tonight. You don't ever say, oh yeah, uh, I allowed you to be hungry. That's an oxymoron. But God's ways are higher than our ways and His thoughts are above our thoughts. Even as heaven is above the earth, so are His ways above our ways. And God speaks to Israel and says, I put you in a wilderness so you could be hungry. I allowed you to be hungry. What are you talking about, God? He says, I allowed you to be hungry to test you, to show you what was in your heart. The only way that you could look introspectively into the mirror of your spirit, your soul, and your faith is to pressure you with hunger, to pressure you with desire, to pressure you with desperation so you could see what was inside your heart. That's why we have things in the world like domestic abuse and violence and alcoholism and drug addiction that are on the rise right now because this pressure is squeezing out of man what is on the inside like a sponge full of water being squeezed. We're, we're being revealed what is on the inside. And I don't know about you, but about the first two weeks of this shutdown and quarantine, I was sickened and disgusted with myself. I literally, I'm telling you the truth, I felt like I was backslidden. I felt like I was so far from God. I felt less spiritual than I've ever felt before. I was praying more than I've ever prayed before, but I felt less spiritual than I've ever felt before. I I'm telling you the God's honest truth and being transparent with you tonight that I felt further from God even though I was seeking God uh, uh, with more devotion than I've ever sought after God in, in the first few weeks of this quarantine. And I realized that what was happening is that this pressure, this a, a tight place of distress and affliction was squeezing out of me the things out of my heart that I didn't realize was, was there. Can I go ahead and confess a little bit more? I realized that the main motivation for my relationship with God was my ministry. 
I realized that the main motivation for me to pray in the morning was to say, man, I've got revival coming up with East Wind Church or I've got church coming up at uh, in Palm Bay. I've got to pray so we can see people filled with the Holy Ghost or I'm going on a crusade to Africa or Bangladesh and I've got to be prayed up so that I can see the miraculous and I want to make sure I have a good sermon. Now you say, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that uh, unless that becomes my foundation foundation of my relationship with Christ. I don't want the motivation of my relationship with Christ to be ministry. I want my motive. I feel the Holy Ghost. I want my motivation of relationship with Jesus Christ to be Jesus Christ. His presence, His spirit, His knowledge, His voice, His word. I want to have a relationship with Him so that I can have a relationship with him that would be like saying well why do you uh, uh, that would be like saying I want to be married to my wife because she's a good cook well there's nothing wrong with uh, being attracted to a, a great woman of God that knows how to cook me a chicken fried steak nothing wrong with that but that motivation needs to be low on the totem pole my number one uh, purpose and priority of wanting to be married to my wife should be that I just want to be in her presence I want to know her I want to have that relationship with her that no one else has uh, that's got to be our priority of walking with Christ and so God God said, I put you into a tight place. I put you into a place of barrenness, a place of desolation, a wilderness, so that you could become hungry and see what was in your heart. I feel like somebody's saying amen. I, I feel there's a witness with me here listening to this word right now. You know what I'm talking about. That in the middle of this quarantine, you felt like, my God, I feel less, less spiritual. What is it? It's that the things were on the inside were being brought out to the outside so that God could deal with you. But here's the word of faith. Are you ready? I, I'm going to have to preach this in its entirety another time when I come to East Wind. So I, I just got to jump to the good part right now. God says... I allowed you to be hungry so that it would show you on the inside what is in your heart because I'm about to do something great. I'm about to bring you into a land. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Ah, ah, Jesus' name. My God, I feel the anointing of the Spirit of God right now. God said, I'm about to bring you into a land where you're going to eat from vineyards you did not plant. You're going to draw from wells you did not dig. Watch what the scripture says in Deuteronomy 8. He says, I let your clothes not get old. I let your shoes not wear out. I let your feet not swell. I took care of the outward man, but I tested the inward man. Watch what he says. You go down. And he says, I'm going to bring you to a land with wheat and barley. In verse 8, this is the King James. And vines and fig trees and pomegranates. And a land of olive oil and honey. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. He said, you're going to eat in abundance. And thou shalt not lack anything. He said, I'm bringing you to a place where you will not lack anything. Let's jump down to verse 11 here. He says, But beware that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping His word and His judgments and His statutes which I command thee this day. Verse 12. Lest when thou hast eaten... Watch the prophecy God gives them about what's to come. He says, You're going to eat when you have eaten and are full and you have built good houses and dwelt therein. He says, you're going to eat and you're going to get a little fluffy. <laughs> you're going to grow because you're going to eat in such abundance and you're going to live in good houses. He says, verse 13, and when your herds and your flocks multiply. Hear me, Pastor Myers. It's a prophetic word for East Wind tonight. He said, when your herds and your flocks multiply and your silver and your gold is multiplied your resources are exponentially growing the flock of the church is exponentially growing and multiplying he says and all that you have is multiplied 
Hear me right now. This is God. I feel the Holy Ghost through this little iPhone camera right now. I hope somebody's hearing me tonight. Uh, God said there's coming a moment. Uh, it's right on the brink of your horizon uh, that you're going to eat in abundance. Uh, you're going to live in good houses. Uh, you're going to have flocks and herds that multiply. The people are going to grow. The church is going to grow. I feel the Holy Ghost speaking to me tonight telling you to get ready. You're going to start having church. You think having church three times on Sunday is a lot. Wait till you have church every day of the week because there's so many people coming to church. He said, your money and your gold is going to multiply. He says, in fact, everything that you have is going to multiply. Everything that you have. The preachers are going to multiply. The prayer warriors are going to multiply. The intercessors, the people who know how to travail, the aisle runners, the praisers and the worshipers, those who can sing and dance and shout and clap their hands and shout hallelujah those who can preach and preach with the preacher those who can go into the highways and into the hedges compelling everybody to come he said everything that you have is going to be multiplied hallelujah he said but if you forget that what God has done he said your heart will be lifted up and you'll forget the Lord your God which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage who led you he said remember that God led you through that great and terrible wilderness where you wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought where there was no water he said I took you to a place where there was no water and I brought forth water out of the rock. I've got a whole nother uh, direction to go with this verse. I'll go another time with East Wind. But he says, I took you into a place where there was no water. Water is a type of the Spirit. He said, I took you into a place where there was no water. And then I brought water out of a rock. Meaning, I brought water out of a place where there was no water. Out of an object where there was no water. What am I saying? What is God saying right now? He said, I brought you out of bondage I brought you out of a place where there was fiery serpents and scorpions and I brought you to a land where there seemed to be no Holy Ghost I brought you Pastor Myers to Palm Bay where there seemed to be no Holy Spirit moving I planted a church where there seemed to be no apostolic movement I brought you to a city where there seemed to be no flow of the Spirit he said but in that barren land he said I brought water out of an object where there was no water I brought the Spirit out of an object where there was no Spirit. That's the preacher. He said, I brought the Spirit out of a preacher where there used to be no Spirit. Uh, oh, hallelujah. He said, I brought it out of a rock. That's why he looked at Simon when Simon said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of God. When Simon declared the mighty God in Christ, he said, You're no longer Simon, but you are Petros. You are the rock. You are the rock. And upon this rock, I will will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it oh you've got a preacher that God said anybody that declares the mighty God in Christ not just Pastor Myers not just assistant pastor youth pastor Sunday school teachers but anybody that will preach that will speak and declare the oneness of God the truth of God he said you are a rock and I put my spirit in you where there was no spirit but I'm going to let my spirit flow from that rock from that place that's why Jesus in John 7 said if anyone thirst have him to come after me if he will believe on me out of his belly will flow rivers of living water there are prophecies all through the Old Testament that says I will bring forth I will bring forth rivers into the desert I will make a way where there seems to no way he says I will bring the waters to the wilderness I will bring rivers to the desert that's you East Wind Church you who have hungered in this season God allowed you to hunger to reveal what was in your heart so that when this exponential multiplication revival and harvest happens and hear me it's happening now through your rock through your voice through the Spirit of God so that we won't forget verse 12 says I did all of this lest 
when thou hast eaten in full uh, and when thou hast good houses and dwell therein. Uh, he says, I did all this stuff. I let you go through a wilderness. I let you go through a tight place of affliction. I let it seem like everything was falling apart. Uh, I let your pantry and refrigerator go empty. I let your bank account diminish. Uh, I let you go hungry so I could test you so that when you get to the land flowing with milk and honey you can still lift up your eyes unto the hills and say I remember where I came from I came from a gutter I came from a whorehouse I came from a, a, a bar I came from a club I came from the street of destitute I came from a house of ill repute I came from addiction and brokenness and divorce and weariness and suicidal thinking, depression and loneliness and fear but here I am in the land of harvest flowing with milk and honey so I will still lift my eyes unto the hills and say and declare my help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. I feel like we need to praise right now. I feel like we need Jesus said for the Father seeketh such to worship Him those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth we need to lay out just a little foundation of praise right i'm done preaching i've got so many more notes on this i don't have time to go through it but we need to let forth a spirit of praise and worship so we'll never forget where i came from and where god brought you out of he brought me out of darkness into his marvelous light he pulled me out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock to stay i'm speaking to everybody. I'm speaking to fifth and sixth and seventh generation Pentecostal children right now. You ought to realize where you came from. Maybe you were born into Pentecostal church, but your family wasn't born into this. Your grandparents weren't born into this. At some place in your heritage, God pulled your family out of darkness. While they were yet sinners, Christ died for them. He's allowing us to go through this. He's allowing us to be hungry so that when we see uh, the land that he's bringing us to uh, we will be able to lift up our hands and say uh, if it had not been for the Lord <laughs> if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side I don't know where I would be but thank God thanks be to God that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world Come on, I need a few rocks to stand to your feet right now and lift up your hands and let the spirit of the living water just flow from your belly right now. Out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. That river is supposed to flow into the desert, into the barren land, into the wilderness. Let the spirit inside of you flow out of your home right now into the neighborhood of sinners, into the neighborhood of drug addicts, into the neighborhood of those who are lost and confused and dark darkness up. Let that spirit flow from your innermost being. Come on, fathers. Come on, mothers. Come on, husbands. Come on, wives. Come on, sons and daughters. Gather together with your home and with your family. Lift up your hands if you're by yourself even. Lift up your voice and let the spirit of living water begin to flow from your innermost being. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to log off of this live stream right now, but I want you to keep praying and let that spirit flow right now. Something's happening at East Wind right now. The ground is shaking. I hear the sound. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. God bless all of you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everyone. I want to thank you for joining us here at East Wind Pentecostal Church. And we want you to know that if you'd like to be baptized in Jesus' name, we can do that for you today. 
we can do it here at the church. We have a baptismal here at the church. We'll even come to your home if you have a swimming pool. We can baptize you in your swimming pool. It's that important for us to help you to be baptized in Jesus' name. We also want you to know that if you'd like to learn more about the Word of God, more about the Bible, that we have experienced teachers that can come to your home, teach you a home Bible study. We can even do a video chat. Whatever works for you, we want you to know that we're here for you. Also, very important, if you need prayer, we have prayer teams that can come to your house, pray for you at your home, or you can even send in your prayer request here to the church. We just want you to know that we're here for you and that we want to do anything that we can to help you in these trying times with your walk with the Lord. You can visit us at www.eastwind.church and our phone number is 321-723-2030. God bless.